So, you were 21 years old. You just got cast as Supergirl. I don't think so. Was it not 20? <laughs> I was 18. 18? Oh, wow. how, how, do you fe how did you feel about taking this title character and becoming, taking on this whole movie? At 18. I mean, it was so exciting. I was 19 by the time we were done shooting. But um, it was just so exciting to make this film, to be cast, to get a part at a performing arts high school where, you know, getting acting work was all of our dream. It was the fame high school, so I had been, we weren't allowed to work really while we were there, so this was the big experiment get a job. Yeah, I wanted to get it. It was really exciting. I mean, all I had was just looking forward, excitement, 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 excitement. Did you know anything about Supergirl before you got cast? Nothing. Nothing? Wow. Zip. I don't even know how popular were, how popular was that comic then? I mean, I don't know that it, it was, it was still really big in the... More now. It's not in the Manhattan. What do you think of that original, uh, kind of screen test off costume they gave you with the headband and the right. perm. Like. I know, really wonky. But they were just saying at the other table that she was that way in the 80s. Well, they, the they did that because the movie studio told them, hey, make her that way in the comics, so they did. And yeah. then the movie said, oh, never mind, we're doing this. Yeah. But then they stayed that way. What? Oh, look, you have it. Fantastic. So that was done before the movie. Yes. It was done before the movie, but the movie asked them to do that. Oh, to, and then to tie they in. And then they, like, oh, yeah, no, we're not doing that anymore. But crazy. You have fun. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Good um, ink. Nice and, ink. And you've <laughs> raised two different versions of Supergirl because on, you know, the live action show, you know, um, you're doing that. But then also in DC Superhero Girls, yes. you're Martha Kent and you're raising How that many more mothers can I play? I know. You're, you're, you're your own mother. How many I'm people own... can say that across multiple continuities? That's too? true. Am I my own mother? I am. <laughs> I am. And I'm Clark's mother on Smallville. Yeah, Clark Kent's mother. Yes, because you're Laura. Yeah. You're your own mother and your own aunt. Like the mother, I'm gonna get some kind of special like uh, placement in the universe. Yeah, we think so. So the the costume if you've never had super for the original super movie you yeah. played. Um, what was that like? I guess was it was it a lot of fittings or did they get it right? I the remember first time? they tried out a lot of different things. There were a lot of uh, chefs in the kitchen because it wasn't just it had with Salkins. I'm sure DC was part of it. The costume designer, the yeah. So yeah, but somebody at one of these comic cons bought one of the original Supergirl Leah and it looked so tiny. I was like, did it shrink? I mean, I haven't, my weight hasn't changed that much, but I was like, I don't think I could actually, it looks so, the only thing I can think of is that just the dry heat or something that actually that material, it must have gotten, just must have shrunk it. So, what about uh, flying? How was that like? I mean, I as a little girl, and even to this day, whenever I have a flying dream, I feel like I won the lottery because it's so vivid and such a beautiful experience. Have you ever had a flying dream? All the time. It, there's just nothing like it, right? Mm -hmm. So then to be actually doing it in a movie, I, I don't know, I had this just particular joy around I'm going to be doing that thing that I love so much when I have it. So, over the last few years, Supergirl has become much bigger than it had been in many, many years. And so how does it feel to be known as the first? Yeah, people have been asking that. You know, it's sort of like, I, it didn't occur to me. That's the only way to describe it. It just wasn't on the radar of like, oh, I'm the first of this. You know, I can put a feather in my cap. I did this. But what I do think is that it's curious that between 1984 and 2016, or whenever the Supergirl series came out, that there was nothing. I mean, even with all the flaws of the original screenplay, you would have thought somebody would have been like, come on, let's just take another whack at this. And they really, until Greg Berlanti was just like, let's, let's do this. So I find that just interesting. Was there even a, a another woman lead superhero movie between no. Wonder Woman and Supergirl? Not well, in the Catwoman. lead. We had Catwoman. We don't talk about Catwoman. I don't like Okay, I guess we don't talk about that one either. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about them because they were, they were bad. not great. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's but that's different still. Why is it different? It's not it's not DC, right? It is. Well, oh, it is DC. Well, what that one, one is Marvel. One, one, one is Marvel. But still, they're they're they weren't really heroes. I mean, it's not well, the same as a young woman like think yeah. of Melissa right now, or just where they're figuring out who they are and keep making these choices, moral choices or ethical choices of like putting other people before themselves. That's unusual. Like you can't define that just as a character, even in the. Um, Did you give any advice to Melissa? Somebody else was asking that. I mean, I love this girl. I think she's incredible in the part. She's so deeply talented. Very early on, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the stuff about just being in this part. But, you know, my big thing is they one-hour TV shows work those actors way too hard for too many hours. I, I think there should be legislation or new laws put in because she will solidly work uh, 15, 16-hour days. And there's just no reason when you're doing a 22-episode. And anyway, that's beside the point. My feeling is that thing of self-preservation, self-care, so that you do have something in the tank. That, I would say, for any young person in there. 20s and 30s, just that mentality, especially in the West, especially in the United States, that vertical thinking, like you keep going, keep achieving, keep producing, keep going, keep going, and there's a, you know, I, I personally think there's a flaw in that mindset, and actors, we definitely have, you have to be, you know, you have to have a lot of inner strength to go like, I'm going to take a pass, or, do you uh, do you see uh, a part of you in the Supergirls in comics now or in the TV show? Like you know, I did have like a weird psychedelic experience. I had it when I saw Laura Vander Hoot. Is that how we say her? Yes. <laughs> when I first saw her on the set of Smallville, like I remember looking at the back of her and thinking like, okay, that's what I looked like. I, had, I couldn't see her face, but I was like, oh, that's kind of what it was like 25 years ago back then or whenever it was. And similarly, seeing the S on Melissa, that kind of, I had a little bit of this wonky, there's no way to describe it. Just, I wish I had the words. It just felt really odd. It was such a melding, all-encompassing experience. No one else had played Supergirl yet. Here I am in my 50s, seeing somebody in the thing that I was in. Just, just kind of surreal, I guess is the right. And you've done, uh, what's that in the past? You've done Talia Abu for Batman That's true. And that's a good Martha, call. Um, Martha Kent. But right. I wanted to give you like, a proposition. Yeah. So, you know, the late Adam West, he did Return to the Cape Crusader. He did yeah. Batman versus Two Face. Yeah. What did they ever position you to do Supergirl 84 animated? Would you ever Oh, that's funny. Who was saying that? Someone else had not quite that question. Yeah, I mean, I would, sure. I don't know that our voice has changed that much, so it would kind of be okay. However, like Adina Menzel, who's the most incredible singer on the planet, she did Frozen. Yeah. But I felt, because she's more my contemporary than not, like, mm -hmm. this is a 40-something-year-old doing a young 15... Like, I just <laughs> felt, as an older person, I think if I was younger watching it, I and I know that nobody cared, so I, I would be sensitive about that. About being a Supergirl voice in my sixties, uh, <laughs> just to kind of continue, I yeah. just, just to keep going. Go. That's yeah. very cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. So, you've also contributed to the comics. You wrote a story I for did. Supergirl number fifty back I in two thousand ten, I think it was. Yeah. Um, how how does it feel that you were able to contribute to that legacy? As so well? fun, just so fun. Yeah. Say yes, yeah. fun. <laughs> there it was. Why not? <laughs> Was any, it any memories of working with Peter O'Toole on the Krypton sequences? I mean, I remember when I saw the scene in the Phantom Zone finally shot, and I thought, and I thought, like, oh, the wind is blowing, it's this natural acting, and he was Shakespearean. He kind of had his hand <laughs> up in this whole, and I was kind of like this lame, yeah, that kind of. So I had a little bit like, oh. But um, I've told this story before that. Um, I had these speeches from Shakespeare memorized because of performing arts high school, and one was this Juliet speech that I know is the Mask of Night is. I know it's the Mask of Night is against my skin. Anyway, well, it's not coming to me now. 
But he said to me, and I was doing it very emotionally to Romeo, you know, and he said, I want you to try it again and pretend you're holding two daffodils in your hands. And what that did is it grounded me and allowed this poetry to come through. So that's a very profound memory of him. Very zen. Yeah, more, no, but more from an acting point of view so that the Shakespeare could come through and you weren't distracting with your hand movements or your... And the other thing which I just told the other table was him saying to me this thing about, I want you to think about the word aware. And I thought like, that's so wild he's saying that, but here it is 35 years later and that's a really good prompt to say to an 18 year old. Because think about it, like what are you aware of right now? Where is your attention? Kind of had that Zen Buddhist something. Did you have any moments with like Faye Dunaway? Um, um, not personally. It was very, she was extremely professional, you know, sort of ran a very tight, sort of tight ship. Um, and I'm sure it's very tricky for her to have stepped into just this wild, like, Hieronymus Bosch painting. Like, what are you in after the kinds of roles she had done before? Um, so I think she probably was a little more buttoned up than just... Mm -hmm. And Brenda Vaccaro? Fantastic. So warm-hearted, very, uh, you know, as you can imagine, just lots of dripping with warmth and humor. And, uh, and why didn't you look for the Omega Hadron? You went to school instead. Crazy. <laughs> like your Where are the script writers? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you agree with us on that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we like watched the movie again last night at the hotel, like, and like I'm like, her parents are dying any day, and you're you and Lucy Lane are like what having is French that? fries. For goodness sake. <laughs> agree. So I, it's, it's I just not make everyone movie. happy. <laughs> it's not necessarily the same situation, but. Um, you did an episode of Supergirl last season, Midvale, and these young actresses were stepping into parts that they had never right. really done. And now you're kind of on the other hand, you know, you have these young actresses. Did you give any advice to them? Um, they were so strong, both those girls, and delightful, like solidly delightful. And I thought they looked amazingly they did. like they looked the older, mm -hmm. like Kyler and Melissa. Um, I don't know that I'd give advice, really. I mean, I've played now moms a lot, and I'm only going to be Supergirl, but The Lion Game and Gigantic and these other TV series. And the most fun for me is um, when they have auditions for something else, and traditionally everybody at some point is auditioning for something else. And then because I love coaching actors, I love actors so much, so to me that's like the boon. Mm -hmm. uh, working on a scene for their audition. <laughs> yeah. It gives me great joy. What's it like to be here and to see how, really how Supergirl's grown and, and just yeah. the, how, the fandom of this place? I can't, I'm kind of, I mean, I'm sure this is wrong to say this, but I am surprised that it still has a life this many years later. I mean, it really, I've done a lot of other films that have sort of been whatever, or television shows, but I guess in this era of these superheroes, I think the timing has a lot to do with it, and that Melissa's show is doing well, but I can't imagine it's going to keep going. I think at some point it will have its rest. My version, not the whole thing, but yeah. I have like an interesting thing about, will they change the... Um, not always keep doing these traditional beautiful women um, that are that whose bodies are traditional like I would really love to see someone take on in the superhero pantheon like the women that don't look like the uh, man's ideal version of a woman or and we haven't seen that yet it's still even though a lot has changed there's a lot more humor it's a lot there there really is now in the same way i think with gay movement coming out like the lgbtq with just women's body types there are women that are coming out as bigger that are coming out as a new with that not having to feel um just the culture knocking them over the head of how you're physically supposed to look and why not in a superhero or summer it'd be really cool because there's a lot of there's a lot of i think it would go a long way for a lot of the women young girls that are growing up who are still feeling isolated still feeling 
they don't quite fit in. There's a comic book actually about a superhero. What's it called? Because I saw Faith. it. Faith. Faith. Is she the? Yeah, she's she's curvy. Big. Yeah. No, this yeah. is something else. It's a graphic novel. She lives on an island and she has to oh, really? go get food. And she's a big woman. And it's a graphic novel. Oh man, I'm gonna find out what it's yeah, about. And that's really. No, not that, but that's cool. Yeah, faith All right, is then I stand corrected. Faith is amazing. Faith is great. Does she have a power? Or she's oh, yeah, she's super, she has superpowers. Oh, well, then I am completely stand corrected. Yeah. Well, but it's, that's not a big. I don't know. It's not a big. But you're wanting it to be, you know, wider, like, you know, a no, wider you know more. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, more in more mass media and stuff. Like, you know, because in every of these new superhero movies, it is the perfect body types. Right? Like, the ones that everyone's it's seen. Yeah, it's, you know, and who's, it's who's just great? It would be interesting. It would be interesting. I would like a Superman that looks like this, too. Right? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Maybe there's a series in that. That's like, right. just a fun sort of... <laughs> Have you been um, asked to come back uh, for Supergirl this coming season yet? I, not yet, but I'm pretty sure they, they. So far, the tradition is like two or three episodes. They bring me up. And yeah, you got to knock Dean Kane over for all that nasty stuff he did right? the other year. My goodness. <laughs>